Hello and welcome to this review of this, Sony's AX53 camcorder. It is the successor to last year's AX33. The AX33 incidentally is what I'm filming this review on. And this is very much an upgrade to that model. It's had a few tweaks and changes and they are significant enough that if you have an AX33 or if you are considering buying an AX33, I would say to you, don't. Get the AX53. It does seem to be a much better camcorder. That's the conclusion of the review. There we go. All done. Need I say any more? Well, I will. Let's talk about what's different on this one. For a start, the lens is now a 20 times optical zoom instead of a 10 times optical zoom. And when you are out and about filming, whatever it may be, nature, the kids, holidays, even professional videos, that extra zoom range does come in handy. The other significant change on the AX53 is a completely new sensor. The old one in the AX33 was square shaped and they took a crop out of it to give you the 16 by 9 widescreen shape. In the new camcorder, the sensor is 16 by 9 so the entire area of it is being used to form the picture. The pixels are supposedly much bigger, 1.6 times bigger, and that means they collect more light so the camcorder is better in low light. I will return to that subject in a minute because, again, it is noticeably better than the AX33. The other thing this camcorder now has in addition to the BOSS, the balanced optical steady shot system that the AX33 and the AX53 have, there is a new electronic stabilizer added to that, but only, and I must make this caveat, only when you're shooting in HD mode, because essentially what it's doing is using all the spare pixels that it doesn't need on the sensor when just shooting HD to add an extra degree of stabilization. And I'll again come back to that in a second. Let me give you a brief tour of the camcorder then. As you can see, it's not the smallest unit in existence. Now, compared to a few years ago when camcorders were this size and we still thought they were tiny, obviously this is a marvel of engineering. But compared to some rivals, this is quite chunky. I remember complaining about the AX33 in my review of that and saying, oh, it's a bit heavy. Well, this is pretty much the same. It's, it's not really pocketable. There are some Panasonics and indeed some Sonys which you can slip into a pocket. Not so with this one, but that's not to say it's big, just that you need to be aware that it's chunky, I suppose, for a modern camcorder. On the front, you've got that 20 times uh, zoom lens. You have got a lens ring which can be assigned to various things, so you can have it set to focus, you can have it set to exposure, which is Sony's catch-all term for everything from shutter and f-stop and gain, or you can tell it to, for example, set the f-stop or set the shutter speed. However, as with the previous model, Sony have slightly crippled it if you are enthusiast in that one of the exposure elements will always be in auto when you set the other one. So, for example, you tell it, I want a fixed shutter speed of 1 50th, well, the iris is now in auto and there's nothing you can do about it. If you go and then try and put the iris in manual mode, you'll find the shutter speed has gone to auto. It toggles between the two and you cannot, for the life of you, have both of them in manual mode no matter how much you try. It's slightly infuriating if, like me, you like setting everything manually. But I've learned to live with it and, whisper it quietly, I've learned to accept to use this camcorder in pretty much auto point and shoot mode. And by and large, it does a perfectly reasonable job. There have been instances where I've needed to override the focus. There have been instances where I've wanted to lock the exposure so it's not changing. But shame on me, a purist through and through, I've been putting this into auto, letting it get on with it, and 99% of the time, all right, maybe 95% of the time, it's getting it right. So, for that reason also, I'm quite impressed. Anyway, that's the lens at the front. You um, have this little button on the side which enables you to toggle through the different functions of the lens. Tripod mounting underneath, flip out screen which does all the usual things, flips around, flips down to the side. Inside here, SD card slot. Notice how the slider flips flush with the camcorder. The old one, the AX33, actually came out as a little door and that meant you could, in theory, accidentally shut the screen onto it. This one flips sideways, which is better. 
Little battery on the back, uh, lasts for about an hour, an hour and a quarter. You'll probably want to buy a spare or a bigger one. You have got a viewfinder, which comes out and flips up, but without any sort of eye cup on it, actually I find this viewfinder pretty hopeless, partly because I wear glasses, but just, you know, you end up wanting to shade the light it really does need a big eye cup and it doesn't come with one, which is a great shame. The other infuriating thing that this does, that the old model did as well, is as soon as you pull out the viewfinder or as soon as you open the screen, the camcorder switches on. Even if you just want to take the card out, it switches on. And that means that this screen protector, sorry, lens protector at the front is forever opening and shutting, opening and shutting every time you just want to take the card out. I just wish Sony would accept. They know of the problem. People have complained about it before. Just accept that some of us want to open the camcorder up and not have the damn thing switch on all the time. It should be a setting in the options for don't switch it on unless I actually press the power button. So Sony, if you're watching this, please, it's not acceptable to keep opening it and then pressing switch off because that's missing the whole point. That was the solution I saw suggested by Sony. Oh, we'll open it and then switch it off. No, you're, you're missing the point completely. Anyway, I'll calm down, stop ranting now. There's a DC power socket where you can charge the thing, start, stop recording. On this side, little flip across flap reveals a little mini USB, which is one of Sony's weird proprietary things, but you can charge it through that USB, which is a relief because the previous model had a little USB charger here on a loose cable. That is now gone. So if you want to charge this through USB, you have to plug a USB into that cable, but you can at least still do it. There's a mic jack there. There is still a headphone jack, but they've moved it. It's now under here. If I can get that out, there we go. There's your headphone jack. But I tell you what, that is gonna come off at some point. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not sensible to have that folding out like that, I don't think, but at least they've included a headphone jack. And for that, we can be grateful. On top here, 5.1 surround sound microphone, don't use it outdoors in a wind, it will just get the usual <laughs> noise. You really need to put a little external mic on this or some sort of fluffy over the top of it if you're taking it outside. Under here, there is a cold shoe where it's sort of cold slash hot. It's got Sony's proprietary um, electronic connections in it. So if you buy certain Sony accessories, they do talk directly to the camcorder. For example, there is an XLR audio adapter, I believe, which you can just slot in there and then there's no extra wiring needed. It's talking straight to the camcorder through the shoe. On the back here, this is the zoom control. It's fairly typical of these camcorders and it's also far too small. You can't do anything terribly fine with this. You can try and if you're lucky, you'll get one, but uh, it's it's more of a tool for composition than doing any sort of gentle dramatic zooms. I mean, not that you should generally be doing that that often anyway, but if you do want to, it's not very easy. And immediately behind that, rather awkwardly placed, is a button that takes a still photo. I find this awkward because when I've got a little microphone on top here and I'm trying to hold the camcorder like this, I am forever brushing that button with my finger and then a big warning comes up on the screen saying you can't take photos now you're doing recording in xyz mode it, it's just slightly annoying i don't know where else they'd put it but that is not a good place for the photo button so there you go there's round the camcorder it, it's light enough i suppose it, it's 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 no no small thing the entire lens and sensor assembly as before is mounted on a little gimbal and this is what gives this it's just unbeatable i tell you boss balanced optical steady shot system stabilization if you want the best stabilization in a camcorder without mounting it on a gimbal or in any other kind of contraption to steady it you need to buy a sony with boss because it's superb um, i think i can demonstrate the thing if you you might be able to just see that as I wiggle the camcorder around, I don't know if this is gonna come out or not, but the lens assembly is keeping itself steady. And it does a super job. And the new intelligent active stabilization mode that, as I say, adds a layer of electronic stabilization on top of the optical, but only in HD. It's wondrous, it is a thing of beauty. It's best used, I found, for walking shots. If you're trying to walk along or you're trying to track your family pet dog or something and wander along with it, put this into intelligent active stabilization and it will do an amazing job. I used this camera recently for a paid bit of commercial work, 
much the same as I used the AX33 about a year ago, filming inside a truck cab. And this was a big 10 ton tipper truck thing. They bounce around like you wouldn't believe and trying to hold the camera steady is just not possible. But I was doing my best, put the steady shot on and with the boss system working, it was smooth as butter, if that is such a phrase. It truly is remarkable. I know I'm sound like I'm just evangelizing the thing, but it's fantastic. And for me, I do do various bits of commercial work where I'm filming with industrial machinery. And to have this without the need of big contraptions to smooth it out makes a huge difference. I grant you this doesn't look terribly professional when you get it out of the bag, but if you're filming in a truck anyway, you haven't got much space for big machinery. So this is definitely worth having in your arsenal. Uh, so that's the stabilization we've talked about. Oh, uh, that extra stabilization only works in HD, but if you are in 4K mode, you still get all the benefits of the BOSS, the balance lens and optics, and that in itself is um, pretty impressive. Now, one thing to mention, various people have noticed, and I have confirmed this myself, if you put this camcorder onto a tripod, and zoom in, and you've got stabilization on, the camera's, for some reason, turning the stabilization off. It knows it's on a tripod, don't ask me how, but it does. And then when you prod the screen to change any of the controls, unless you've got it on a really, really heavy, solid, not moving at all tripod, I mean a big professional jobby, that small movement of you prodding the screen translates into a shaky wobbly image because this thing's turned its stabilizer off. I think if it kept the stabilizer on it would compensate for that slight wobble. It only needs to be a bit. Soon as you take the thing off the tripod and hold it in your hand again it seems to know it's being handheld. Presumably it's got some sort of stabilizer thing that works out that it's, it's wobbling around and the stabilizer comes back on again and you actually get a more steady shot handheld than you do putting the thing on a tripod if you're trying to change any of the controls. It's a bit barking, people have complained to Sony about it, and I can sort of see where Sony are coming from because usually if you put a camcorder on a tripod you do turn stabilization off so you can do nice smooth pans and tilts, but it's no good if you're putting it on a static tripod on a long zoom and then just want to adjust anything because the shot will wobble, so just be aware of that. Let's talk picture quality with a caveat. This is a consumer grade camcorder. It's not going to win any awards up against super high spec DSLRs with super high spec lenses or even pro broadcast cameras. That said, this thing is once again a thing of wonder. The image is perfectly decent. I always look at these things from the perspective of who is going to view the finished image. Is it going to be my mum watching a video of her dog? Is it going to be my client who, you know, they're not TV professionals. They're not people who go around pixel peeping every last thing. They're going to look at it and as a whole say, is that a good picture? Is it, is it sharp? Is it in focus? Is it correctly exposed? And yes, under all those criteria, this produces a very decent picture. I'm quite sure that if you wanted to get a magnifying glass out and look at every last pixel, you'd say, oh, the highlights are a bit overblown there. I don't like some of the lost detail in the blacks and all that kind of stuff. But that's for people who are into cameras. For the viewer of the video, it's stunning quality, especially if you pop it into the XAVCS 50 megabit. That's an HD mode. Uh, it's just a thing of wonderfulness. I tend to use the XAVCS for my corporate work. I even use good old fashioned 24 megabit, megabit, megabit AVCHD for my vlogs. I run a vlog channel about my life on a narrowboat. I use AVCHD. It's perfectly decent for doing that kind of thing. And yes, obviously, you can switch it into 4K mode at 60 or 100 megabits if you need that extra resolution and detail. And that is, of course, one of the prime reasons for buying this camcorder because it will do that. But just between you and me, if you want a camcorder that shoots super HD and has all the super stabilization, get this anyway. Forget the 4K, just use it in HD. It's really very good. So, uh, what else have I got to say? Let me just consult my notes here. Uh, we talked about the lens, the boss, the sensor, the tripod, the lens ring, the exposure, the pitch quality. In use, yeah, it's great. 
I'm, I'm a real fan of this. I know I came down quite hard on the AX33 last year. I said it was bulky. I said I didn't like the fact you couldn't control the exposure. And yeah, I had some reservations about it. Buying this one, I can wholeheartedly suggest that this is a good purchase. I like the extra distance on the zoom. I like the extra stabilization if you're trying to walk using the intelligent active mode. I like the low light performance. Let's talk low light. I said I was going to come back to that. The old model, not good. As soon as you added any gain, and in fact, even without gain, it was a noisy image in dark conditions. This one, it's a dramatic improvement. Yes, you will still see noise if you start adding in the gain, but either because of those bigger pixels or because Sony have worked some clever magic in the software, that noise really is masked. On the AX33, I had the gain limiter set to about 3 or 6 dB because I really didn't want it putting any gain in at all. If the image was too dark, I needed to add more light. On this one, I am comfortable enough to let it put pretty much as much gain in as it wants. And yes, yes, there will be some noise, but it's way better than the old model. Um, a, a substantial and noticeable improvement. Have I sounded enthusiastic enough about this yet? I like it very much. And if you are looking for a modern, reasonably compact, bells and whistles, 4K, super stabilized, nice picture quality camcorder, either for home use or for a bit of YouTube, or even at a push for certain professional uses, this could well fit the bill. There we go. I hope that was useful. Thank you very much for watching. Cheers now. Bye-bye.